What if your favorite non-JRPG franchise became a JRPG? We've already seen great examples like Super Mario RPG, but I feel like there's so much potential in a ton of other franchises. So in this video, I've recruited a number of creator friends to my party to talk about other non-JRPG franchises that would make great JRPGs. Be sure to check the pinned comment or description below to support all the creators in this video, and we'll begin with David Vink. Hi Taylor, thank you so much for having me on your channel. This is David over at the channel David Vink, and the game series that I think really most needs an RPG adaptation is Kirby's Adventure. I've had a long and storied history with this series, first getting it for like, I don't know, maybe upon my 12th or so birthday for the NES, and it was a brand new series then, and I have loved it ever since. It is just so cute so light-hearted, so fun, it doesn't take itself seriously, which is why I think that it would work so well as a JRPG. Imagine Kirby going around, gaining new powers by defeating bosses, almost in like a blue magic type style. He can also get different party members, like maybe King DDD, or Whipsy Woods, or the Waddle Dees, all the little enemies in there. Just like kind of how Mario has these iconic enemies, Kirby does too. And it's just so fantastic, and I would just love to see it as an RPG series. It's been around for so long, and I am shocked that there really hasn't been an adaptation of it yet. Thank you again, Taylor, and everybody, have a good one. Hey everybody, it's Fem Trooper, and thank you, Taylor, for having me on to talk about a non-JRPG franchise that I think would make a great JRPG. For me, that's Donkey Kong Country, hands down. We saw it with Super Mario. They did Super Mario RPG and then the Paper Mario series and the Mario and Luigi series. Clearly, you can take platformers and make them into JRPGs easily. And Donkey Kong Country is no exception. Hands down, it would make a phenomenal JRPG. Just think of the cast of characters and who you would have in your party. Like, it would be fantastic. You know, like Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, but then you can maybe have like really weird ones. Like you could have like Candy Kong in there or Dixie, a Funky Kong. Like there, there are so many you can name. Like it would be, it would be awesome. Then you've got the music. Uh, you could get David Wise to do the music. Those are always like phenomenal. Some of the best scores in, in video game history easily. I would, oh my God, like it would just be so good. The enemies would be the Kremlings. You'd have like boss battle, uh, some um, amazing JRPG fight against King K. Rule. The environments would be great. They'd all be like jungly. There'd be caves, mines. There'd be like a mine cart thing. Oh man, I just know it would be great. This would be one of the best JRPGs. I would absolutely love it. I'm actually sad just saying things about it, just talking to you guys about it right now makes me sad that we don't have it, but a girl can dream and I think maybe one day, maybe, we'll actually get something like that. Who knows? So that's my pick. I think it would be awesome. I think it would be like, you could, I don't know, action, turn-based, whatever, but you could definitely make a JRPG out of Donkey Kong Country, like, easily. Like, it would be so, so good. So thank you again, Taylor, for having me on and I'll see you guys later. Oh, hello there, minions. It's me, Claptrap. I'm here on behalf of that weird Scottish person chicken fillets. My game Borderlands would be really fantastic as one of those games that the gaming shelf talks about so much like it's going out of fashion. Us Pandora people are no stranger to mixing it with our games. I mean look at Tales of the Borderlands God, it was an awesome time. Recently in Tiny Tennis Wonderland we even had an overworld map. So let's go one step further. Let's change our loot and shooting from a into turn based combat. Imagine you could give me a big sword and spiky blood hair. That's original! We already have a mass amount of bloodthirsty characters to choose from. But most importantly, you have me minion, me Claptrap. We can go defeat those disgusting stairs together. Shall we also add in some of those those wife views? I think we should, because reasons. I know what's missing the victory fanfare. The end of a battle, we can all dance together. Do die do do die dum dee do do do. And then when it comes out, everyone can leave Taylor the Edge all coming. I hope it comes out on Nintendo Switch. Whoa, 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 hold on. Did I say you could talk on my behalf? Sorry, sir. No, I didn't. Get out. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, Borderlands was the game that would be great as a JRPG. <sighs> yes, Borderlands would be a fantastic 
JRPG, the lore is there, and the Borderlands series is no stranger to mixing it up and just generally taking the mick out of things. But what I want to know is, what are your thoughts and would this be a good JRPG or would it be rubbish? Let Taylor and myself know down in the comments and please remember to like, share and subscribe to Taylor as well. But until next time, tatty bye. And sorry for claptrap. What kind of a name is Chicken Phillips anyway? Hello friends of the gaming shelf, it's Miss Bubbles. Thank you for having me. So the franchise that kept coming to my mind was Fallout. Hear me out. Fallout 1 and 2 had turn-based combat, so let's take that instead of an action combat, and we can use the vast system from Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4 to give your character those critical hit chances. Plus, Fallout makes use of a ton of items, so in combat, you'll have to strategize if you're going to take your turn to hit the enemy, or use an item like Buff Jet, Mentats, or Rattle away instead. Also, the special skill tree will help you determine what kind of strengths and weaknesses your character is gonna have and that will make you, you know, like think a little bit about how are you gonna strategize and level up your character. Then let's have an open world just like Fallout does. I love roaming around, finding new side quests, and I would love to see more JRPGs take that route. Plus, we're going to have an anime style here in a post-apocalyptic world so both enemies and allies will look pretty cool. I mean, how badass Nick Valentine Strong and Dance would look like with an anime character design, plus all the ghouls, super mutants, and death claws, I think that would be pretty awesome. But here's the twist, and this is based on Taylor's description of what a JRPG would look like. Definitely check out that video because it helped me out a lot. He said that JRPGs are usually more linear, so as you know, Fallout games have multiple endings and really your choices will make a big difference. Maybe this time around we just have one linear story. I don't want that, but I mean, to make it a JRPG, maybe we should do that. Also, let's keep the settlement building from Fallout 4, but instead of having so many of them, let's have just one and have it act like a hub where your companions just hang out and build better friendships, kind of like Persona 5. However, it would be nice if we can have our companions show up in the world as we move because most of the JRPGs that I see, they hide your companions. Atelier Games and Tales of Arise come to the top of my head when I think of that. So I don't know about you, but in such a harsh environment like the ones in Fallout, seeing my allies makes me feel safer. I could go on and on about how awesome Fallout would be as a JRPG, but I think I've said enough. Thank you, Taylor, for having me and I hope to see you guys on my channel. Despite traditionally being an action platformer, Castlevania has been no stranger to RPG elements ever since Symphony of the Night. But even so, the series has never taken many steps outside of its arcade and metroidvania style comfort zones. However, Castlevania's world has surprisingly all of the makings for creating a great traditional RPG. For starters, while it may be easy to assume that the playable cast of Castlevania consists of nothing more than Alucard and a family of whipslingers, there's actually a huge variety of different character archetypes that could be used to make up a party. With multiple spellcasters like Cypher from Dracula's Curse, werewolves like Cornell from Legacy of Darkness, and a wide variety of other vampire hunters wielding weapons like swords, spears, and my personal favourite, a gun. Structurally, it could work in a very interesting way as well. There is a fairly big gap in the Castlevania timeline in which the Belmont bloodline has seemingly vanished, and so multiple different groups of humans all set out to devise countermeasures to Dracula's inevitable return. And using this point in time would be a great way of naturally implementing a large group of weaker vampire hunters who all need to work together to take on the count. The first act being used to gather and introduce the party, with the second dedicated to fleshing out said party members, whilst also discovering or assembling some sort of tool to help kill Dracula, with the final act being one super dungeon being Castle Castlevania itself. With the typical Metroidvania openness being applied to an RPG, now that you have a well-equipped high-level party, tackling each section in almost any order you choose as you cut your way through the Castlevania bestiary. Hi, this is Emily from Orbalgy, and the franchise that I think would make a great DRPG is the LEGO franchise. Now, LEGO has made plenty of games over the years in multiple genres, from sports games like LEGO Soccer to park simulator games like Legoland and the more well-known platformer collectathons. But what they haven't done is a traditional JRPG. Now they've done a RPG-like 
mobile game in the past called like a legacy that's more of a team forming sort of game that is able to upgrade their skills with various things they could build. The more traditional JRPG that I think LEGO could potentially make is one that integrates an interesting story, maybe something similar to what they did with LEGO Island back in the day. And maybe this could take in some sort of fantasy LEGO land with multiple different continents to represent the various LEGO sets they've had over the years. Make it into a more story-based progression where characters can be customized using different body parts as a way to build their stats or upgrade their skills. So for example, if a character wanted to use magic, they could don part of a wizard's robe and hat. If they also wanted to increase their speed or something, they could take legs from, say, one of the sports sets and kind of build a custom character to suit some sort of class need. And I was a little torn whether or not this would make a good action RPG or a more traditional turn-based RPG, but I think what might be interesting and a little different for the franchise is to do a strategy RPG, which would be perfect given how grid-like the bases are or um, the Lego sets. But I think the possibilities are endless of what this JRPG can look like and what sort of characters and story narrative they could shape. And they can also borrow from so many different pop culture IPs that they've collaborated with in the past. So I think a game like that would be fun, especially if they weave in some of the humor we see in a lot of the Lego games to make it just a more lighthearted but fun JRPG experience. What's up everyone, Alex here. When Taylor asked me what non-JRPG franchises would make great JRPGs, I immediately started thinking about the games I played on the DS. Games like Professor Layton, which I then immediately remembered had London Life, which technically isn't a JRPG, but you can kind of imagine it being as such. And so I looked onward and thought, who would be the right person for the job? And that's when it hit me. Phoenix Wright. We've seen him use his lawyering skills in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 to deal massive courtroom damage onto his enemies. We've seen him tackle cases with Professor Layton by his side. But if there's any one thing that demonstrates why the Ace Attorney series would be great JRPGs, it would be the series' appearance in Project X Zone 2, where Phoenix Wright and Maya Fey act as support characters. I can imagine the gameplay loop being similar to that of Earthbound, where you go from one modern locale to another, and Phoenix and company use their lawyering skills to reason away their enemies, gaining much needed experience and levels to finally battle it out in the courtroom. And that part isn't so difficult to translate to JRPGs, because even though these battles are done in a visual novel style in the original games, the sound effects and adaptive music give the impression of forward momentum and action. So every single piece needed to turn this into a JRPG are already there. So Capcom, if you're watching this, greenlight a Phoenix Wright JRPG. I would totally buy it if you turned this into a reality. Hi guys, TKN here and thanks a bunch to Taylor for letting me take part in a very interesting topic. Now in terms of choosing a series that could excel as a JRPG, I feel that said series must have a couple of core elements. First of all, it must have established and rich lore with the opportunity to expand on it, and secondly, it must have the scope to allow for enjoyable gameplay mechanics. And with those in mind, I chose to go with the Star Fox franchise. Now the series hasn't had a recognised new release since the disaster of Star Fox Zero. I'm excluding Star Fox 2 here since that was already developed in 1995, it just never released. But it has everything I believe can work in the genre should it make the shift. Initially it has the established lore that works around it, with a host of recognisable characters, not to mention the setting of the Lilat system is near on limitless in terms of potential. There's just so many avenues the story could steer. Secondly, in terms of gameplay, I personally don't have a preference for whether it could be action or turn-based, but think of all the potential that is already there and how it could enrich the gameplay. R-Wings, Landmasters, the Blue Marines, so many vehicles to change up the style, and in a way we've already seen what a potential action RPG could look like with 2002's Star Fox Adventures. While that gameplay is more akin to Zelda, it would be fairly simple, you would think, to adapt to a standard action-based approach. It'll most likely never happen, and to be honest, I think Nintendo lost faith in Star Fox Fox after Zero, but if it ever did come back as a JRPG, I'd be all over it. Hey guys, Zyger here, and I wanted to contribute to this video by telling you the non-JRPG game 
that I think deserves to be made into a JRPG. And in this case, I should say series, because when Taylor asked me this question, I thought of Ninja Gaiden for the NES, so we're taking it back. But Ninja Gaiden is just packed with awesome lore. It was one of the first games with those kind of animated storyline sequences in between the stages, with lots of great lore, starting from the first one forward. And there's tons of subject matter, but for me, the best parts of the story were the, in the first three games on the NES. So you could have the first one being about Ryu tracking down the mysteries of his father, Ken. Um, the second one, you could talk about Ashtar and the Dark Sword. Third one, you can talk about Foster, that agent. But there's tons of lore that could be packed into this, and it's the perfect series that could be made into an RPG. There's already characters, there's arcs that are known to people that know about the canon, and it's really interesting and dark, exactly the kind of RPG I would like. So that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. A non-JRPG franchise that would make a great JRPG. This is such a fun topic, and I'm so looking forward to hearing what the other people are saying. But I thought Super Smash Brothers. Imagine collecting like a party with Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, Kirby, Pikachu, I mean Samus Aran. And I would like to see all of these characters together in a JRPG where you are traversing from town to town, maybe Genshin Impact style, maybe even tiny bit like a Xenoblade game, or maybe just like how Paper Mario was doing it. You collect party members and you go from town to town and you have dungeons, you have stuff to do, you have side quests and it could work. Imagine having turn-based combat with like a party of Zelda being the healer, Pikachu being DPS, Donkey Kong the tank. Maybe the story could take you to like an actual Animal Crossing village. Or maybe you could go through portals and visit suddenly the Donkey Kong jungle or the Pokemon universe. Or this is also how Disney Dream Life Valley did it, if you guys have played that. There are portals to every world. That could actually work, guys. Make Super Smash Bros. a JRPG. Now, that was my contribution. Thank you, The Gaming Shelf, for inviting me. Now, this is the first franchise that came to mind that I think would work perfectly as a JRPG, and that was Street Fighter. And we kind of have already seen it with games like Project Cross Zone. It's this strategy RPG, and you can play as Ken, Ryu, and Chun-Li. You kind of do these fighting game-like inputs when you want to do your attacks. And even the upcoming Street Fighter VI kind of has these RPG-like elements where you can explore and walk around the world and get into fights and stuff like that. But for me, I think a system that would work much better would be something like Tales of Destiny, where it basically plays like a fighting game anyway. You have a party of up to four characters, it takes place on a 2D plane, real-time action, you can swap between any of your characters on the fly, with three other characters being AI controlled, and I think you basically keep that same type of combat system, but just simplify the inputs compared to a real fighting game. But you know, fighting on a 2D plane, a system that would be familiar to fighting game fans, and something RPG fans could enjoy as well, and I just feel like it'd be super satisfying to pop in a battle super quickly, like you're in a 3D world exploring, and then the camera perspective just sort of shifts to a 2D plane as you get into fights, I think that would be so cool. Cool. And also Street Fighter has one of the best character rosters of like any franchise. They have so many you could pull from. You know, maybe in this game you could start off small with just Ken and Ryu, but then they go on this big globe trotting adventure. You're trying to stop M. Bison or Akuma. And obviously you'd fight familiar villains along the way like Vega, Zangief, and Sagat. And of course you got to recruit characters. You got to build out the party as you're going on this globe trotting adventure. And you got to have the series favorites like Chun-Li, Guile, and Blanca, but maybe some silly ones could be fun like Dan. And of course you got to have awesome costumes that you can unlock along the way too. Too. there's just so many across the franchise that it just makes sense to honor them in an RPG game. And of course, you gotta have the mini games too, like that classic car smashing mini game from Street Fighter 2. Maybe have an RPG fighting tournament like so many classic RPGs have. In fact, yeah, actually you definitely gotta have a fighting tournament. It just makes way too much sense here. Also, I think Street Fighter's art style would lend itself really well to a JRPG. It's very colorful, very anime, and very bold. Overall, I just really can't think of a better non-JRPG franchise to make a JRPG out of than Street Fighter. Now, if you want to watch another great collab with a lot of the same people from this video, be sure to check out this one right here. And special thanks to Reset Switch, Tyler Kuzava, and the Miyazaki Man for supporting me over on Patreon. To get exclusive videos and other cool perks, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash thegamingshelf. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.